Imagine this. Imagine if I said that most of this film's cinematography reminded me of a Japanese Wizard of Oz, except for actually genuinely creepy characters, not silly ones, and that's exactly what makes it a masterpiece. I'm not even exaggerating whatsoever. What is going on guys? Welcome to 31 Days of Horror Year 3. This is day 21. I am Morgan Film Fan. Let's jump into some scares, shall we? Kwaidan is a Japanese 1965 film, uh, anthology film, with four different segments or stories, whatever you want to call them, in them, and um, claimed to be a masterpiece in Japanese horror cinema, and one that has certainly been on my radar for, uh, well, I was going to say for so long, but, I've you know, two, three, four years, um, kind of uh, has caught my eye, and I finally got to see it now for 31 Days of Horror, another one that I'm very glad that I got to save it for that. And, uh, damn, son, this film's good, man. Um, just drenched in atmosphere. I mean, a lot of it is... Funny thing about this film, the way the, the cinematography is done and the way the, the backgrounds are done. <clears throat> it, it Most of the scenes seem stage-like, where you have your sets, and then you have your uh, background, which let's say is a sky. But instead of a sky, what they'll do is they'll make some kind of massive canvas, and uh, like a canvas of a painting. Like the painting of a sky, or the painting of a mountain, or the painting of... Uh, valley or whatnot and it's just absolutely glorious to look at I mean the cinematography the cinematography in this film is out of this world just stunning I mean the runtime on it which is three hours long it's three hours and three minutes I believe but that includes like credits and stuff so you're basically at three hours of a film I mean it, it didn't scare me away or anything but I'm like yeah, this film's going to like be a little bit uh, on the slow side. Nope, not at all. <laughs> not at all. It's um, it's a fantastic watch. I mean, one of the best Japanese films and Japanese horror films that I've seen. So you get four segments. Uh, the segments are called Black Hair, The Woman of the Snow, Hoichi the Earless, and In a Cup of Tea. And I'll basically go briefly through uh, each one of those. Um, the first one... The first two I love. The first two, in my opinion, are the best in the movie. So the black hair is about this man who is in... He has He's married. He's uh, He has a wife, and they're in this weird relationship where he's unhappy. She doesn't feel good enough for him. He leaves her because he wants to, uh, you know, grow himself without her. Like, he basically feels like this woman is completely holding him back and he wants to be free and adventurous and seek the world and he does that for like a year or something and then he comes crawling back to her and she kind of takes him back as if she doesn't deserve him in the first place and she's just happy to see him back and uh it it's called uh the black hair because when this guy comes back basically as soon as he returns things start to crumble uh, with him and around him like he starts to age rapidly everything around him starts to age rapidly where they live starts to break down so you kind of get this like this sense of of maybe he he's uh come back to a nightmare kind of thing and and in that kind of uh, lore of like you know Potentially what I assume is that his girlfriend has been long dead and he's kind of holding on to the memory and 
coming back to a memory and chasing a memory kind of thing. And I mean, the way that, the way that, that uh, scene is played out where everything around him is crumbling and his hair is falling out, it's just unbelievable cinematography. Cinematography at its finest. Uh, number two is The Woman in the Snow, where... It begins with these two guys who get stuck in a blizzard and one of them is older, like 60s or 70s, and the other one is a very young man uh, at 18 years old. And um, the uh, the older man uh, basically gets frozen to death by this spirit, which the 18-year-old witnesses. And uh, he, this, this woman, this beautiful-looking uh, woman with long black hair, which I will mention that it seems like these segments kind of intertwine in the way they feel. So maybe they are connected in a sense. They're totally separate stories and they, they don't, <clears throat> they don't um, interact with each other story-wise. But you can kind of see that maybe they're, in, they're obviously in the same universe kind of thing with the connections. Uh, but this woman, um, she basically like, like blows onto this man's face and freezes him to death as if they say the the blood has been sucked completely out of his body and then she goes up to this young 18 year old dude and uh, she's like if you tell a soul about what you just witnessed I will kill you so he uh, he moves on and a few years pass and he marries a woman and uh, I'll leave it at that to uh, with without giving any spoilers I'll just uh, keep the premise at that but basically shit starts to go down with um, the hauntings of, you know, that event kind of thing. Um, the third story is the longest one, and I honestly do feel this one dragged a little bit. It, it kind of, like, I, I'm pretty sure it goes over an hour. I'm pretty sure this one is 60 minutes on its own in a three-hour movie, so this one felt like a third of a movie by itself. But it starts off with this huge, huge battle in the sea, and uh, it, it's like a sword battle. The sword battle is breathtakingly beautiful. The, the blood, the gore, the, the lore of it, the cinematography, like I keep mentioning, the cinematography in this film is just by itself 100 out of 100 <laughs> because I hate decimals. We know all that. We, we all know that. But um, yeah, it starts off with this battle and then the, uh, we start to follow this guy who's blind and um, he he's, he's told to basically almost go to the sanctuary or this temple kind of place and um, he's, he's, he's constantly lured there uh, because when he, he, he plays the, I think it's called a bira, bira uh, the Japanese instrument basically, kind of like a guitar or like a mandolin hybrid kind of thing. But when he plays this music and he sings, the whole event that happened years before kind of reenacts itself and he's led to this worship place to kind of reenact it all the time and it just it leads to the reenactment of the battle kind of repeatedly and there's a lot of um like this guy is kind of sought after by these I don't I don't even know how to describe these people, but these people kind of want him to keep singing and keep playing his song to reenact this battle kind of thing. And uh, it was very, very good looking and, and really well done. Um, just possibly could have been like five to ten minutes shorter in my opinion. And then you get the fourth segment, which I think is the shortest. Um, it's called the In a Cup of Tea, and basically... This guy just keeps seeing uh, ghostly uh, images. If you haven't noticed that this film is a ghost story, <laughs> so every segment in this film basically in one way or another revolves around ghosts. And uh, this guy, he keeps seeing these ghostly figures in his uh, tea, in his water. Every time he looks into the tea, it's it's the smiling face at him. And uh, people in the town think he's, he's going crazy or he's seeing things, he's hallucinating, whatnot. And, he, and these things keep escalating and escalating until the point where they start to become actual figures. And he has, like, battles with them, but he's the only one that can see him up to a point. You know, because, you know, by the end of the segment, other people start to see him and start to realize that he's actually not crazy, that these things are actually happening. And um, it's kind of a... it's an interesting one, too. I mean, um, I'm not going to say the third one is, is my least favorite, but... 
the one that drags a little bit because it was beautiful too. I just found it um, kind of overstated to welcome in a sense. Um, easily, stories one and two are my favorite. Easily, they're masterpieces. Um, and then the third kind of dragged in, and then the fourth was just kind of short and quick. Kind of, they, they felt like they just threw it in there. But um, it was still cool. Like, it was still well done, and it really wrapped up the whole um, quiet in experience really well. There goes another candle. <laughs> I like that smoke, though. But, um,. But yeah, that's that's quiet in. Um, it's an absolute masterpiece, like absolute masterpiece. This is going to be the highest score that I've given so far in a review. I'm going to come in with this one at 98 out of 100. Wide of 100 because I hate decimals, um, and it absolutely deserves a 98 out of 100. Um, <laughs> need I say more? Um, I usually like I would say 100 out of 100. But I tend to give perfect scores to my favorite films of all time. So if it's not there, I'll generally stick to 99, 98, even 97. But 98 out of 100 um, is quite an understatement for how good um, this, this, uh, this beautiful film is. And in, in the words of... Um, Nicholas Winding Refn, the director of Drive, Only God Forgives, The Neon Demon, and The Pusher Trilogy. He says, if you ever want a, an amazing ghost story, just leave it to the Japanese. Well, hell yeah, leave it to the Japanese. Like, they, they know exactly what they're doing. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, um, there's, <clears throat> there's a lot of culture in this film. So, when you're watching it, you kind of have to take yourself out of Western culture and kind of put yourself into Eastern culture. And maybe with more research, I would even appreciate this film even more. I mean, it's it's loaded with Eastern culture. It's loaded with Japanese folklore and tales. It's based on an author, actually. Um, all four stories are. Um, I'm just trying to see if his name is back here. Yes, Lufkadio Hearn's Collections of Japanese Folklore. Uh, they've basically been translated and adapted into Western um, translations and understandings, and that's what the four stories are based on. But they're they're very Eastern kind of thing. They're very they're very uh, about the Japanese culture, which is um, it. You I mean it's not like you can't understand it, but it's uh, it would just be nice to know more about. Japanese folklore to really dive into a film like this because it's just so friggin well done um, It's subtly haunting which I love with the ghosts and with the storytelling. It's just everything is so so subtle and um, I mean it's Need I say more? Um, there is a scene of titties um, for a 1965 Japanese film, usually they're a little bit more reserved, and being 1965, it was like, damn, full shot of titties, nice titties too, but, uh, yeah, full, full, like, 15, 20 seconds, 20 seconds of titties, um, and I was like, hmm, interesting for a 1965 Japanese film, uh, <laughs> there you go, so, uh, there's, uh, some visuals, um, to go with the genius of the film itself. And uh, that's basically all my notes, and I feel like I'm kind of rambling right now. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at a 98 out of 100. This is the highest score I've given so far. I loved it. Um, I cannot wait to keep going. Um, this is my third Criterion film. Or fourth, fourth, fourth Criterion film, if you include um, video drone. But uh, no, actually, my mistake. It is my third Criterion film: video drone, Haksan, and Kwaidan. If I'm pronouncing Kwaidan properly, I'm I'm just going by what's written. So I assume it's Kwaidan, and uh, excellent film. I mean, one to check out from the Criterion collection. Comes in, uh, you know, your booklet with your essay from, um, usually it's a film critic, yeah. It's by a film critic, Jeffrey O'Brien, talking about the film. 
um, properly, I mean, you know, not like I just ramble on about way, 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 way more professionally than I, than I uh, can talk about a film. But anyway, I digress. Check it out if you, um, if you're interested in my ramblings and uh, what I've had to say about it. And I enjoyed the shit out of it. It is a perfect ghost, ghost story. So that's going to be it for day 21. Um, we are almost at the finish line, and there's some very special stuff coming up um, in all kinds of other genres. So I am excited to keep it going, and uh, until next time, that's going to be day 21. So I will see you later. Subscribe to Morgan Film Fan and my Instagram. But, uh, <laughs> um,. I am Morgan Film Fan, subscribe to Morgan Film Fan, and I will see you guys later. Cheers.